We are Lagos Talks 91.3. Let's talk. It's 8 minutes past 11. Good morning. Welcome to the most entertaining, the most exciting, and the most informative show on radio. It's the midday show with your radio butterfly, Ifunaya. And I'm very excited about today's show, guys, because it's been two weeks out of the people's perspective and I've missed it thoroughly and that's exactly what we're going to do right now with my unequivocal co-host Shell and Nicola Kutsi. How are they, oh, Lagos people, Niger people, how are they see everything these days? Hope everybody is trying to keep it together. I know it's you no know, easy this moment but let's keep it together. Welcome to the show. <sighs> let's keep it together. All right, guys, we are going to be touching on some topics today. We're going to be talking about a certain technique that alleged corrupt politicians have now started incorporating whenever they have a court case. It's either you're collapsing or you need some water or you're dehydrated. So we're going to be talking about Mena in court. Um, and then we're also going to be my talking man. about the Mena, suspension. My ma, my <laughs> ma. Hey, hey. <laughs> The suspension of a SIM registration and um, the reaction from the stakeholders. What are people saying about it? And why really um, has the NCC decided to go ahead with the suspension of SIM registration? And then we probably are going to splash a little bit um, of gist talking about Nigeria being on the U.S. religious blacklist. Just sprinkle that a little bit and then wrap up the show uh, for today. How come the most religious people in the world are now on religious blacklist? We are very confused. I'm telling in you, fact, people, I think you people this need came to as just, a shock. I, 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 listen, What's going you, on? you religious, you Christians and Muslims, you are letting me down. <laughs> In so many ways, I always say it. In so many, now you are now religious blacklist. <laughs> imagine. But now see what the cost again now. Can you just imagine that? You people have religious yourself into a blacklist. That's terrible. If only you know that the uh, UN was a toothless bulldog, I'll have been here now scared for you people. <laughs> You'd have been scared for. Eh? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Anyways, guys, let's get into the show. Let's start off with Mena, who allegedly stole billions of pension funds, collapsing in court. And this is um, a method that is not uh, uh, new to Nigerians, especially corrupt politicians, whenever they have a court case. Um, as you know, Abdul Rashid Mena, who is the former pension chief, Abdul. who is uh, being tried for stealing pension funds, collapsed in court Abdu, just Abdu. yesterday. We saw the videos, we saw the pictures, and we were in awe. I believe that's the word. We I see you, awe. Una mind, that's what they're putting up for blacklist. Una mind too strong. Just imagine. Una see person like that faint, you are, you are in awe. Instead of you to be empathetic, feel sympathy. Listen, a man is about to die in front of you. We've gone past yeah. that. We've gone past <laughs> that. We are, we are five years ahead of that. Oh, like, listen, God. don't play us for fools. Listen, you know the person that started this fainting that he really worked for was Cecilia Ibu. Aha! Let's take it all the way back. You remember 08 when the old financial crisis, Whoa. they now caught them giving loans. She took the Oceanic Bank, she loaned all the Oceanic Bank money. She she borrowed it to herself. She borrowed it. Wreck a bank up. I never seen that kind of thing before. Mm -hmm. When they reached court to go, she almost died. She had to serve a sentence in the hospital. Mm. So I think uh, people are getting some, you know. See, our women in Africa, I always say they are the women are the true creative force in Africa. Why is it because in this case she was the first person? Even that where did they this. are not the ones actually doing the act, uh -huh. they are the ones inspiring the act. I'm telling you, women mm. in Africa, African women are the greatest. Is it just on is earth. it is it just an African woman thing or it's a woman? It's an African thing. woman thing because you know it's just that African women were here first. Mm. You've had them. Um, you had like a. 20,000 head years head starts on all other women. So mm -hmm. you, you, you've perfected. <laughs> you pa starts. Yes, it's true. You, ah. This is what they don't want us to realize that we, they oh call us gosh. third world, yes. but we are the first people. So Indeed. we are first world. We are the first world. Anyways, let's just get into this. Let's uh, talk about Amena yeah. being tried ah, by. Sabotage. The <laughs> Oh Sabotage. I'm done. <laughs> Mena um, is being tried by the anti graft agency EFCC. Um, on Wednesday, to be precise, Mena, who twice escaped from Nigeria after being granted bail, began his defense. 
just on Wednesday where he asked the court to dismiss the suit and declare that he has no case to answer. And I wonder why he was so bold to do that. During this hearing of his no case submission, on Thursday, he collapsed <clears throat> inside the courtroom of the Federal High Court in Abuja. Now the judge, Okun Abang, subsequently adjourned the case for some minutes. Now Mr. Mena, who was recently re-arrested in Niger Republic, where he fled to after, you know, being granted bail by the court, is being prosecuted on a 12 count charge of theft and money laundering. And so on Tuesday, the FCC's last witness told the court that Mr. Mena bought two houses in Abuja for $3.4 million and paid for the houses in cash. Cool cash. Cool cash. Cool. The witness, um, who is an FCC investigator as well, said this while testifying against the former pension chief. Hmm. Um, hmm. So this particular witness is the FCC's ninth witness in its corruption trial of Mr. Mena, who was the head of the de defunct pension reform task team. And so um, even before this happened, I remember Premium Times previously reporting that Mr. Mena's counsel, Juan Anayo Adibe, had earlier on Tuesday asked the court for an adjournment of the case, stating that he needed more time to study the case, which of, of course was refused. And so Premium Times uh, uh, reported that and then here we are in court yesterday with Mena just all of a sudden collapsing it's 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 quite laughable honestly speaking because we've begun to see this as a pattern amongst corrupt C can politicians I ask you a what? what will happen if an arm robber faints in court that's a brilliant question Sharon. I really want to know a brilliant I mean, question if we are in court in Nigeria they bring an arm robber you know if I mean arm robber is even too big a crime just say police radio, you know, do anything normal way. You reach station now, you faint for police station. That's <laughs> see, eh, or you reach that, that's the court card, you go court, you go faint in front yeah. of the judge. <laughs> that your fainting will get you extra punishment. That, I, that I is bet so my true. life on it. That is so true. The judge will be so infuriated mm -hmm. by your by your fainting, mm -hmm. even if it's real, oh, mm -hmm. even if it's real fainting. Mm -hmm. That you say you are making a mockery of his court, mm -hmm. blow their big grammar, not Gavin, Igboa. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> send you to to a ruler like inside prison but here we are in their court every day you know as i said to nigerians you know i've also just realized that nigeria actually works mm -hmm. for a few people but nigeria works for those that believe that they own nigeria mm -hmm. to them or at worst they are supervising nigerians <laughs> on behalf of outsiders or some other forces we don't know it's true because I rather for those people, healthcare is premium. They get the best healthcare and they are in Nigeria. They get security team following them all over the place and they're in Nigeria. Their rights are respected. You don't you understand? You know, their children's rights are respected. In fact, listen. So, what is amazing me here is that we, the people that say we are Nigerians, and this Nigeria doesn't work for us. You know, you still find us being the ones enabling this behavior, mm. enabling this act. That's why they cannot change, you know, because if you go into uh, a judge's chamber today, I had a case of one young boy that was in Lasso, that was like a student activist. And, you know, because of his activism, the, the VC put a case of attempted murder on him that wow. the boy was trying to kill him you know so this case you know the police arrested this boy you know i don't want to say his name or anything it's you know how long he spent in jail without being how convicted long? 18 months my goodness and every time he came to court the judge would not come if the judge didn't come because normally they, they thought you know because he's poor so they thought you know, they threw him in jail but ahead of his case so we took it up as nigerian resistance movement we took up the case and we got him a lawyer and we make sure that i in fact i didn't even get pro bono i had three friends i wanted to do it pro bono i didn't want that thing to you know, i wanted to pay somebody to be sure that they were going to fight this case the first time we went to the court the judge you know saw saw me saw my manager said and those fella people lamb blasted my father everything said every yeah. almost wanted to walk us out of the court you know but we refused you know because she, we were just angry because they knew we were representing that boy yes that he couldn't abuse his human rights the way they had intended he couldn't destroy his life anymore throughout after that first day the prosecution never came to court 
and still the boy spent 18 months locked up. The judge refused. So I always tell people, as we have been discussing since NSAS, we the professionals of Nigeria, we are the main problem. Mm. We are the main enablers. This judge, now nobody will know the judge name that Mena is fainting in front of. Uh, nobody will see the judge as doing something bad. Mm -hmm. But the judge is deliberately allowing that to happen in his court. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. He's deliberately allowing the fast. You know, this, if you go to where, uh, that's why you see somebody will faint. All of us know this person is not, you know, nothing wrong with of them. Course. People will be rushing around the person. You know, all of us are there misbehaving. And I don't understand where this hatred of our, because it's not hatred of your brother. You think you hate your brother. No. This act shows that there is some self hate, innate, mm -hmm. you know, innate self hate, yeah. you know, in us. The, the thing, this uh, this particular case, uh, it paints a picture of justice delayed, justice denied. It's a clear picture of it, and I feel like that's like a double edged sword that benefits the elite, so to speak, and it disadvantages the masses because for the elites, justice delayed is pretty much a ticket to freedom for them because a lot of times you would see these corruption cases stay in court for so many years that we the people even forget that there was even such a case against corrupt officials and that's the that's the way it just keeps going on and on and on like an unending cycle now when it comes to the common man justice delayed is a clear mm. case of justice denied because their case will be in court for so many years and they'll be in prison waiting for their time in court but when it comes to these elites they don't end up staying in prison and there's also they end up uniform, moving on with their lives if you don't want to go to jail i was flying back from abuja you know i went to kaba to you know greet the mop movement of the people yeah yeah <laughs> so when kogi people people that's why i went to kaba first you know because kaba is where the british told us the first night that was their first <laughs> head office you know that's the first place they were kaba you know that's where they started this nigerian lie anyway so I was flying back with one of them that is accused right now. Let me know. Ah, your fire she let me say his name. Okay. So I was flying back with Ayosh and he had his get out of jail free neck brace. You know, into your case in court. That's the day he came back. See, he has neck problem. He's head problem. Oh, so He's, he has a neck brace. Yeah, uh, so just watch. You soon see me. Now once they put that neck brace, they have to go. Mm. They have to go for medical trip abroad. That's one of the reasons why they don't fix hospital too. Because as soon as they have case, they tell the judge, eh. I have in Sukula, Malakula, diabetes, <laughs> and a Buddha that can only be treated in Switzerland. That's bad. That's terrible. And they have to go. That's then they terrible. put the neck brace, you know. The, See, that, the, that the, neck brace. Every time you say Nigeria politician the, with neck brace, that means that's I, I go to jail. <laughs> I go to jail. So <laughs> I, I, you know the symbol. If for those that are, are <laughs> conversant with the justice system, you know the lady justice symbol. Um, that is blindfolded. So it's like a statue that is blindfolded with a scale and then with a sword. I feel like our own lady justice symbol in Nigeria is eyes wide open. She's not blindfolded. Because like, for some reason... I think she's actually blind. She, she our means, own is blind. I, don't, I believe I that like, this blind justice yeah. is the same in America. Towards, that blindness is towards black justice. And, and that's what I'm saying. I Anywhere feel like that has, has its open because the whole point, the symbol of you ha being blindfolded, it means that there's no favoritism. It uh, means that it means that the, the rule of law, it covers everyone, no matter who you are. But in Nigeria, it feels like our own lady justice symbol is eyes wide open because for some reason, you benefit or you, 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 you favor the elites and you disadvantage the masses because all the time we see this every single time let's go to jail for 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 a second if we count the number of people that have been in jail for so long without having their time in court and count the number of cases that have been shelved against corrupt political I officials said those prison breaks many of them were awaiting trial people that spent so much time in prison that's terrible. and decided to liberate themselves since they thought nigerians had decided liberating themselves outside they say ah, it has led me to i'm here for nothing <laughs> you have people who don't go from raid to you know me i don't like the symbol of this blind justice business mm -hmm. let justice open eye Mm -hmm. Most to the most to the talk and do. Nobody does justice blindfolded. Lady justice yes, now. He put blindfold. Uh -huh. But if you enter court, judge the scene. Now. That's what I'm saying. Judge the that's scene. That's what we're. That's Anywhere how our lady justice in Nigeria. In the they world. can see. Anywhere in the world, they put lady justice blind. Mm -hmm. Once you enter court, judge the scene. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, there's a case in America of um, you know this Dupont Chemical Emily Dupont. What's, what's her name? Okay. Ah, is it Emily Dupont yet? Yeah. They own the Dupont, this big Dupont family. But I don't know the woman's name. I don't know if she, she has her original family name. But her grandson 
you know, was a pedophile that was raping yeah. his children, his own children. It took years for the wife to be able to even get him to be arrested. She had to leave because they refused to say she can't make a case against her husband and she's married to him. Hmm. So she had to divorce that wealth just to find justice for her children. This is in America, right? She went to, after like seven, eight years, she got the man into the judge, they did the case. When they found the man guilty, hmm? uh, they said uh, the man was too, uh, was not fit for, was not fit for jail. Did he plead insanity? No, no, no. They found him guilty, but they, they, they sentenced him to jail because the judge said the man would not fare well in prison. What? what? Yes. He will not fare well in prison. In prison. As if, as if there are some people that fare well in prison. Well, we always <laughs> say that this thing called corruption, it goes beyond just Nigeria. Corruption is, I, I would say that it is a global language. Listen. But some are able to cover it up more than others. No, I want to that we are corrupt for others. They are corrupt <laughs> for themselves. We, we are corrupt to deprive ourselves. I don't understand it. We, we are corrupt to consume, to consume. Why can't we be corrupt to build great things? <laughs> if we use corruption to build great things, me, I don't mind. At least we, we complain that ah, these people say, yeah, but everybody's enjoying the that's what is happening in america the, the europeans don't know that government is killing people all over the world they know but they accept it as the price that is being paid for them to get these extra resources that's making everybody live soft you understand so what is our own so so, doing? so 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 just on this particular case and um, because we know as the citizens right that this whole fainting and collapsing shenanigan is clearly just drama to escape the the court hearing right however in the court of law the judge in himself can't say oh i believe you're faking your collapse right because you're you you are you're, you're saying that you are probably having some sort of health issue or you know whatever the case might be I so, agree. so yeah exactly but so so what do you think i the judge also not sure is a fainting but that's the thing the judge can cannot then say oh I'm not really sure if you're fainting or not. So because of that, ah, let's let, carry on. Yes, today, let's carry on. Today, no, no. Let's carry on. No, no. no. They, need, they needed to have adjourned it on that That pension day. the man has stolen has led to the death on the line while queuing for that money of many people's grandparents, of many people's parents. Do you know how many pensioners die online waiting for their money? Where, where they'll be dragging and, them and up and down. And we understand this. However, officially... So you are the reason for this. If you like faint, that, that's the thing. If what you what like, do you don't think? Mm, what do you think this would mean for for this case moving forward? Because clearly the case had, be a to be, in had, had to have been adjourned. Okay, and that's let's a, bring that, the doctor. That, Anytime that we are taking a Nigerian point. politician to court, let's bring doctor. Okay. Let's bring nurse. Let's bring MRI scan. <laughs> I I, let's put I, it. I, I mean, that. if this is what we want to do now, let's Google merge the judiciary and the healthcare system <laughs> for our police. Let's merge it into one entity. So that when 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 any politician is coming to court, we know that yes, we need to provide immediate because maybe it's true when you say start hearing the things you've done, you know, in the process of the crime, mm. you are lost in the world. You are just enjoying your criminal behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, it's after you are caught that it dawns on you. You start to reflect. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the the gravity of their of their crime just eat them in court. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you know that was beam. <laughs> Are you faint? <laughs> All right, guys, if you'd like to comment on this, please feel free to join the conversation. Um, like we're talking about Mena in court, um, fainting, he was collapsing, and of course, the case has been adjourned. Now, please remember that he, he is in court because he allegedly stole billions of pension funds. What do you think this means for this court case moving forward? What other option do you believe that the judge could have taken as regards this situation? Knowing that this has so sort of kind of become a method or a get out of jail free card uh, that sure. a lot of corrupt politicians have been waving in whenever they get to court. It's either they're dehydrated or they are fainting or they have an one health issue or the other and like uh, Sheon said you might be having a neck brace as well just to show the, the jobs Listen, that you're not fit for jail neck brace is the dress code <laughs> neck brace and not only that what if Shore also starts fainting in court Shore I hope you are so, uh, revolutionary people you're, ta you're, you're taking notes uh, all you, right let's you, take you go this. to court every day you start as if that you get chest pass <laughs> Yeah? 0809220 <laughs> Lagos Talks, good morning. Please tell Hello, me. Good morning. Good morning. Who's speaking, please? 
Hi, my name is Peter Monte from Shomolo. All right, Peter Monte, let's hear you. Yes, I want to add also that um, I think what they should do is that um, early in the morning that they have to go to court, uh, they have to send them to the hospital <laughs> for the doctor to say that and assessing the state of their health I like that. before they go to court in the morning. And if it is found out that they were taking it, then the punishment should be doubled. Now, I think this is uh, Mena. For me, because I believe Mena is just asking a speech. Either he wrote it by himself or written for. Because this uh, Mena was visited some time ago by Malami in UAE. This man is the one that the oil eater told us that he told Mr. President that this thing will backfire. Mena was brought back to the country, promoted, reinstated. There is this man. We I talked about this two weeks ago. They know what they are doing. But we have to open our eyes for the next government of the people. All of them will answer for their crimes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Lagos Talks. Good morning. Who's we, speaking? We talked please? about that last week. Good morning. Uh, two weeks ago, sorry. Good morning. All right, Ebuka, let's hear you quickly, please. Hey Buka, wait, my my ma, I miss you, my ma, my ma. If he's jealous, no matter, I miss you. Because we're encouraging him. Yeah, if he ever come back to you, you Thank know, you miss just like the other day, you try to call him. You were calling yeah. him. So, uh, other show, you see all this drama they are they are playing out to us. You don't tire us. We understand this. But my problem is this: this money, where did the two billion? Like you, you analyze billions of naira. How many years you you spend? These billions have been flying from central banks, from so many banks. They never capture it. The people that work under that may now or may now, all of them, they will carry out that transaction. They will sign many organizations. They, many of them, they sign many their signature was going under that uh, paper or check. Mm. And the thing was going. Nobody was able to account. What they come, they tell us. And maybe they tell us that money don't go. Maybe they add drama. So one day they on that. What thing they own a case, NDDC. Um, uh, what did they watch? They go tired. Yeah. Thank you. Know, thank you, Ibuka. All right, thank you. Uh, this is coming from Maruf Rabiu on Twitter. By the way, our Twitter handle is at Lagos Talks 913. Use the hashtag The People's Perspective. Um, Maruf is saying justice is ni in Nigeria is too soft for big thieves who ought to be punished. The Mena was brought into Nigeria with no handcuffs in a private jet, and the shorty is not forfeiting his bond and this is coming from charity saying if you and shown wow wow positive vibes i love the dual energy welcome back both of you my favorite people's perspective always saying it the way it is that's from charity thank you very much this is coming from a listener saying good morning if you and show on this fainting matter i suggest the court appoint a flogger so that whenever anyone faints, the person should be given five strokes of the cake. One they beer for this person. If they remain unresponsive, they'll One cold the beer. If you don't like beer, pan wine. <laughs> but cold wine. That's so funny. I mean, whoever that person is. Yeah. What's the person's uh, name? Jeroma from Oshu. Listen. Uh, the, the person that actually said that uh, didn't mention his name. Hey. No, he's a her. Lola. Is he a I didn't see any name. Lola. Okay, so Lola I, I, I say African women. Did I told you? I say African <laughs> women. African women. You people. <laughs> We need a flogger in court. I'm going to talk to a doctor. Me go and no get sense. Forget doctor. We will hook it. May they employ me. I'll do the job free. Mm. Anytime any police is coming to court, I'll be the court appointed <laughs> fainting flogger tester. So when you faint, I'll flog you to test it. <laughs> when I wipe you for your middle of your head, when I wipe. <laughs> when I use the anger I'm of 200, 205 now million Nigerians, yeah. give you once, just one stroke for middle of your head, you will not faint for the next 25 years. <laughs> Fainty and you, will, will, uh, will, Lola, one cold beer. They just make this if you don't like beer, like Lola, joke. cold pan wine. Mm -hmm. This is coming from Jeroma from Ocean saying, Good morning, guys. I want to gamble from Mayna's case. I can bet with my right kidney that. Mayna's case will be swept under the carpet just like other people's cases. Again, nobody, I repeat, nobody will or can respect Nigeria's laws because the president does not respect the rule of law. This is coming from listeners saying, rightly, as Sheon has said, if you as an unconnected or poor person faint, will they send you, they, they would send you to the great beyond. My suggestion, there should always be an independent doctor nurse that is... No, 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 flogger, ni flogger, independent flogger. We don't want do doctor, check. it's too expensive, flogger, <laughs> independent flogger, we've decided, doctor Someone is out said, of the window. Chifudo said, you mean <laughs> brain resetting whipping? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, look, okay, look at the whole NSAS 
movement mm -hmm. now. They said attacking institutions, destroying institutions of the law, which is police station, is wrong. When poor people did it. Now the rich people are in court desecrating the law. Nigerian law, yes. Desecrating the law, the system of our law, our law system, our judiciary, which is part of the police and everything that they talk, Abi. So now they are, that is that is the equivalent of them burning down the courthouse. Mm. See, that is how the rich people burn down courthouses. When they'll be complaining that poor people actually put fire, Wait, they, they don't use fire. They burn it down by removing the integrity of those institutions. So that those institutions will never ever inspire Africans towards anything great or positive. You know, they remove the power of our institutions. In institutions that we gave our lives to for you understand this is not running and giving to us for free in a, in a carnival uh, uh, honestly speaking eh, I, I this you know all these things that have happened in times past have set a very terrible precedent that corrupt officials will continue to tow this path whenever it is that they have a court a court case and i believe because i i, I always see the three arms of government executive legislative arm the judiciary they're all interconnected especially how these judges are chosen i feel like one way or the other there is no neutrality because they would one way or the other be influenced by people in government it's not until we have the right people in government yeah, the right definitely. leaders that we know that there will be true justice in nigeria I, i'm telling you see nigerian people he, the day you vote for good government in this country don't be surprised that nigeria who oh, 24 hours after the election like this everywhere is empty hmm. All <laughs> BI and OE is empty. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Everywhere is empty. Everybody don't take off because they go not say, hey. This really stands in Nigeria ah. when <laughs> leadership is right. Yeah, so because, so this, see, it's just like people don't understand. I always say to people, like, when a man like me now, you know, with all the past antecedents, all the drama that he did, you know, this man was, you know, two weeks ago, we we're discussing this issue now. You know, you, you, I wasn't you want me, mm, my dear. Oh. You send me to, where do you send me to again? Uh, you are uh, Maldives, Maldives. I'm sorry. Dubai. I yes. sent you quite Thank a few, but they talk. Thank you very much. You don't have to show for your skin, Thank fresh. You. <laughs> you know, this man was being protected when ESC wanted to arrest him mm -hmm. in 2015 by DSS. The DSS officer were ready to shoot EFF, EFCC uh, officials to protect Mena. Now, pension theft is one of the most diabolical kinds of corruption that we have in this country. Yes. Because it's not, first of all, you have stolen the workers' labor when they work for you all their life. You didn't add value to their life. They didn't really leave their class. You just employed them. They work for you all their life without elevating their life, staying in the same yeah. place. You know, you are now deducting money from their money that, oh, this money is money you are saving for them. By force, so, like, as if they are children. That they have to pay the money so that they will have something in the... Mm -hmm. You don't want them to come and be disturbing you in future. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, they now still agree to that. Now, people's grandparents are dying because they are being owed this money. I don't know whether we don't... I don't understand what you... Why we don't understand how grave it is when we say someone died, just one person, you know? Like that's why for me when they say, "Oh, buildings were born," people don't understand. As soon as one person had died in the hands of the police in Nigeria, all the buildings in Nigeria is not worth one life. Of course, of course, but we don't value human lives in Nigeria. If you think I'm joking, let us go and kill the American ambassador or somebody. That you know is not Nigerian or you know that or their citizen, harm them and see if America will not come with their jets to level all these buildings that you are all uh, looking up to or something in the name of that. How many people died in 9/11 before America went to three countries? Mm. Both the one way concern, both the one way no concern, both the one way no, both the one way no no. Just, just the one way take here here last song. Everybody collecting side everywhere flat. Flat land, they go reduce everywhere, turn you back to the stone age for you to start again. You know, that is the value of life. But we will be here making excuses, and not only in Nigeria, anywhere in the world, killing black people, killing African people, everybody's making excuses for our lives being wasted. You steal money for hospital, the children will be dying because the hospital is not there, mothers will be dying because the hospital is not there, citizens of your country will be dying because the hospital is not there, you'll be using the money to go to Dubai, people will be praising you, acting as if it's some kind of benign. Act. It, it, you know, it, it's it's terrible. We need to it's understand terrible. the gravity of these actions. That these actions 
are leading to the death of people. And as soon as we hear that somebody has died, it means that the highest injustice has happened. A life has been lost, taken away, erased, irreplaceable. All your building can be rebuilt. Anything you have that you own that is man-made can be replaced. This is why the man-made can ne the material can never come close to the cosmos, hmm. the cosmo so, cosmological. Just just touching on that, it, it, I believe that we have been so desensitized that, you. that we've turned human lives into statistics. Okay, two people died today. Oh, it's, oh. Not as, it's not as much as the ten that died last week. So it's normal or it's getting better. But never we've been so desensitized. One guy was discussing with me. I was telling him about insecurity in the north. He was telling that people never die in civil war. Now. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine that? So and, and I, we must I, and wait till we die. Reach two, I believe that civil these, war, two these, million. these corrupt politicians <laughs> don't understand that you don't have to hold a gun in your hand to someone's face or to shoot someone before you have blood in your hands. They a lot of one. these ah, people they know, they have blood one. in their hands through these different corrupt practices, no, they that taking one. monies that ought to be for medical care, for education, for people to take care of themselves and their families. It's terrible. They know actually. It, it, they it's, don't, it's many of them don't even sleep. Many of them don't sleep. Are you sure many of them don't sleep? Because I'm it seems like a lot of them sleep very sleep. well. They don't sleep. They don't sleep. you see them in because public all the time. Once they're in public, I mean, they'll be falling asleep. They are the, they are the same ones that are tra traveling to Dubai. Yes. I mean, they, to they travel sleep. to Dubai. To they they sleep, are buying me. their different luxurious cars and jets. I don't to know. Those feel, people don't sound like feel, they're not sleeping. To feel though. empty, a bottomless pit. You see, I'm telling you, it is another kind of weakness. You understand? To be a billionaire that can only buy things. I always tell people that billions is the kind of money you're, used to, you're supposed to use to build mm -hmm. nations. Build nations, you you understand? But the problem we have here is that... Bloody hands can't build great things. Oh, like yeah, you, you, got, you got my line? Okay. Of course. That's one. And they're, they're just too weak. <laughs> you know, so that weakness is the inability of them to build a nation. Mm -hmm. So, I say to people all the time, don't see these people as if uh, uh, they don't know what they're doing they know because i'm telling you many of them if you if you are oh you have an appointment come and see me at 2, 2 a.m mm. <laughs> what kind of appointment time is that yeah, 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 come Show, at 2 let's, let's move on to another come story on. they don't sleep let's move on to another they don't story sleep. all right um now just uh the next story that we're going to be touching on today we're going to be touching on the um, order of the suspension of new SIM card sales in uh, Nigeria. And so the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Isa Pantami, directed the Nigerian Communications Commission to order suspension and activation of um, new SIM cards. And of course, this, he said, was to allow an audit of the subscriber registration database. Now, Dr. Ike Chiku Adinde, the Director of Public Affairs, NCC, said in a statement just two days ago on a Wednesday in Abuja that this was in line with the federal government's desire to consolidate the achievement of the September 2019 SIM card registration. Now, Adinde explained that the objective of the audit was to verify and ensure compliance by the mobile network operators with the set quality standards and requirements as issued by the ministry and the commission. He said, and I quote, accordingly, mobile network operators are hereby directed to immediately suspend the sale, registration and activation of new SIM cards until the audit is concluded and government has conveyed the new direction. As we know, in 2019 in particular, the government took the registration of SIM cards extremely seriously because uh, they did believe that there was an increase in criminality due to these unregistered SIM cards where you have kidnappers using SIM cards that couldn't be traced to them and fraudulent activities being done through these different processes using sim cards that couldn't be traced and so they ensure that all telcos register every single subscriber on their platform some are wondering isn't there any other intelligent way or an intelligent solution for the government to carry out this audit without necessarily putting any form of discomfort to the people because for instance if we have new businesses that are being registered um, um, with the CAC, they might want um, a special SIM card for their business. And so for some of these businesses, this could come, uh, this could cause some level of discomfort. And so people are wondering, can't the government use any other method that doesn't necessarily cause a discomfort 
to the people so what are your thoughts about this show the government saying for us to do this and carry it out well we need to stop the registration of sim card the citizens are saying if you're trying to audit a bank do you tell them to stop the registration of new bank account holders uh yeah i saw that in the news yesterday ask that's a very interesting question but for me you know telcos are quite complicit in the in many of the uh issues we have in terms of um social harmony in nigeria yeah in a way you know i think honestly speaking on for my own side i think the fact that all our telcos are basically private owned means that you know they can easily come to they, they are there for profit mm -hmm. national security is not really part of the agreement they signed with the nigerian government mm. it is the nigerian government's duty to uh, secure its own national borders yeah. and ensure national security for ensure national security for its citizens mm -hmm. You know, um, but you know, now this is where me I see a disconnect. It is always easy for the government to make policy and decisions when they know it affects the poor more. Hmm. Policies like this come out too willing really to, um, how would I put it, uh, unilaterally all the time there's no consultation there's no discussion with the people you know it's just done that way mm -hmm. you know the fact that our police cannot arrest kidnappers cannot trade their food, whatever is still due to lack of facilities infrastructure that the police need to actually carry out these kind of operations yeah you understand you know is it telco is it the telco's job to document nigerians this is one question we don't ask you know, and every time we we allow our government put us through the same thing over and over again, mm. you know, go and do national ID card that we'll never receive. You get NIN number, okay, mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> go and do BVN, you know, go and do register your SIM card, you know, all this re registering, registering, registering everywhere is because the National Population Commission cannot register you at birth. Finish. So you are born. Everybody is born in Nigeria willy-nilly. You are not in the system in Nigeria until you put yourself in the system. Of and that course. is what is wrong. That is the foundation now problem of all these ones they are making noise, we can't trade this. Because anybody can be anybody in Nigeria. Is it not in Nigeria that uh, James Ibori went to jail in Nigeria? Then they say it's not that James Ibori, but we had nothing to prove that there was no court record safe to show the picture of the person that was convicted that time. And the judge came out to say, it's not this James Ibori I convicted. Even though everybody knew it was the same James Ibori. <laughs> eh? Is it not this Nigeria? So we are not documented by our government. So this is not the telco's force, really. You know, the Nigerian government, you know, as I say all the time, looks for ways to not work. Yeah. Because if you have this kind of problem with insecurity and anonymity seems to be one of the biggest strengths of the uh, attackers, the right job for this country to do is okay let's end anonymity in nigeria from now all nigerian people are going to have social security you know but national birth certificate as soon as they are born they are in a system we know you we take your you know we know your father we know your mother we know your you know the information the basic information every country works with to know their citizen put you in a system anywhere in the world they type up that name you know you come out you know, so that is the issue here. So the government is basically saying to the telcos, come and do our job for us yeah. before you can continue doing business. You understand? So I think, but is it, is, is, am I not going to start fighting for the telcos in Nigeria that will collect your money and disappear your data? <laughs> eh? I mean, I'm saying, I mean, who are we going to fight for here? What are we going to say here? We have to only fight for ourselves that we need the same lines to communicate. You know, people need sim as we are speaking now today a child is coming of age that needs a new sim of course then what happens many every day a child is coming of age that you cannot tell him you're not going to have a phone or her you know in this new age that we are forget work forget businesses the children our children today need their phones from a certain age and many children will be coming of age every day 
So what would so your parents be then telling do you them? Think, do you think that this encourages the, the circulation of pre-registered sims? Because now that people can't register new sims, we know that there are already pre-registered sims in circulation. So do you think that this would then encourage people to start demanding, make demands of those pre-registered sims? Oh, well, I think it's a way also for maybe the people that have pre-registered pre sims to hike the price the of, prices of the pre-registered Yeah, I mean, that's what's going to happen, definitely. For me, I don't think this is neither here no, nor the, there. Yes. You know, before there was mobile phone in Nigeria, we had kidnapping. Mm -hmm. We had insurgency. Before 2001, Nigeria had different kind of if care, all kinds of things were going on in Nigeria. In the north, in Kaduna, Kano, the killings of the natives and them going to fight in Sabongeri. This has been happening forever. Mm. You know, maybe we never had like a militant group that just called themselves one name and attack but attacks kidnapping violent acts has been in nigeria before there was mobile phone mobile phone came to nigeria 2001 yeah so and before that time we we had the same things too so we cannot just say because the telcos give them uh, it's because the nigerian government in itself has never registered its citizens in a complete national database mm -hmm. where it can monitor you know i mean when like do we do, even do a census in nigeria exactly. When last did we do a census? So we are still running on estimates now. They are saying that we are estimated at over like 205 now. million. About two, two, 206 uh, million is what they are estimating us as. Uh, so it's it's ridiculous. You see, so there we go. I mean, so... All right. This is coming from uh, Chief Udo saying, Good morning, Sherwa and Ifri. Sometimes when we sing, the labors of our heroes past shall never be in vain in the national anthem. I wonder who our own heroes past and who our heroes past and what their labor is maybe they're not talking about politicians and former military leaders because both past and present never did this country well hmm. this is coming from a day saying she no mind those are lazy wicked egoist politicians who are misbehaving right there we go they we go they hammer them hard until they change to the need and do the needful even if we have the high-tech technology they go see they misbehave it's because of their selfish and hidden agenda that they're they that they are pursue it ah, okay and laziness too plays a big role in that all Lazy right people. this um particular Lazy message coming from <laughs> kwe lansky is quite lengthy so i won't be able to read everything but i'll try and read the first paragraph the first thing to know about nigeria's problem is the elites especially the political elites they don't care one bit about these complaints the citizens lament daily about uh, thank you very much. Uh, this one is coming from... What was the status of Ponde? I don't know. Maybe he's going to buy his neck brace. <laughs> Who knows? This is going from... Ponde was he's looking for neck brace. Anybody with neck brace? This is from Olivia. Say, the way she uncle Kuti um, anal analyzes all that is happening in the countries as if he was born in 1914. Shane, why are you sure you're not reincarnated? Uh, I have Expo. Are you sure you're not I have Expo. From it's, Expo. <laughs> it's Expo. People come from that time to see Just me, to, to tell me what's so. uh -huh, up. I believe The ancestors are with me. This is coming from Adegbo Yiga saying, blame the judiciary for all the fainting, collapsing and acting in court. I'm telling it you. It has I become a see. normal practice. Uh -huh. So no judge or lawyer can come out and tell us something different. It's just a way of averting judgment. Judge God don't collect. Everybody is fine. Justin is saying they talk. Morning, See? Ify and that guy gets sense. This corruption, a politician's fainting uh, trend is the height of disrespect to us Nigerians. <laughs> For me, now on his next court hearing, pensioners, he stole their money, should come out in mass, both the ones on wheelchairs, so that he can see the gravity. In, in fact, that's the move. All so pensioners will meet him in court. Oh, is With saying, cane, so in case he faint again. <laughs> Bad leaders, South <laughs> Africa is also responsible for Africans that die in the desert and see as illegal immigrants. Yep. Udrechuku is also saying stopping SIM registration is myopic. Security operatives can use tracking devices and work with telecoms. And um, Sam Bidemi is saying, are the civil servants currently contributing their money into pension supposed to look away when pension managers agree to invest in the so-called government, the so-called government bond? Please talk about this, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not really uh, sure I get what you're no, saying. No, you're talking about, you know, the government is borrowing okay. heavily now from the pension fund again. Okay. What is left of it. Okay. okay. Uh, they've been borrowing it um uh telling the pension board to invest in government bonds so states have been dipping their hands basically uh -huh. all over nigeria okay. you know since this whole all to 
just they are just been stealing from the pension. And so he's saying, so should the civil servant servants just sit back and relax whilst their monies are being used for such a thing? I don't think they should. I think they should. See, say. this is what I'm saying. You know, like I wonder how everybody in Nigeria, no matter what happens, we wake up the next day and we go and work as if we are robots, as if we are not allowed to say stop. We are not coming to work. Tell us what the what is going on. He don't share the gong gong. Break it down, and we don't we not no book. Explain. But I think maybe what because Ni Nigerians they they've been brainwashed to have a defeatist mindset. No, I feel like that might be no, what no. it is. See, I had a I was on Amnesty International uh, on the panel yesterday, and I, and I, I told them I said it is it is actually we the people that mortgage our rights because at the end of the day our rights are alienable in 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 alienable. So. Nobody can really take them away from you. But we, due to access, job security, uh, largesse, you know, whatever we feel that we get, we are gaining mm. by supporting the oppressor, we mortgage those rights. Because really, nobody speaks, yes, we, but nobody has come to tape your mouth shut. Mm. You make conscious decisions not to do these things. You make conscious decisions to help the system, to engage the system, to continue to help these oppressors, to oppress the poor people of this country. So far, it's not touching you. That's why we all believe that private school is a solution to education. You know, private hospital is a solution to healthcare. Generator is a solution to life. Because so far, we can solve our problem. We don't care anymore how, you know, it gets to the poor. You know, how do we wake up? They say the people, 43 people are killed in the north and nigerians wake up and go to work for these same people as if nothing is going on even if the private sector refuse to go on strike civil servants don't call well you, they, those are even the word what, what am i even saying <laughs> we need overhaul let me just uh, nigerian people systems. nigerian people hmm. all right uh, so let's quickly move on to this last story because we have just a few minutes left so we see that the united states government for the first time has placed nigeria on a religious Freedom blacklist. Ah, you said United Nations is U.S. government. Yes, now the United ah, States. The, ah, this is United States, not United. Hey, not the U.S. Hey, is he? Hey, <laughs> hey, don't jam up. So the U.S. Secretary of State, Michael Pompeo, on Monday designated Nigeria as a country of particular concern for religious freedom. Oh, this rare inclusion of a fellow Christians democracy in the U.S. effort to shame nations into uh, action. Now, the State Department, in its annual report earlier this year, gave some reasons why Nigeria should be designated against the background of concerns both at the federal and the state level. Pompeo announced the inclusion of Nigeria in the religion violations list on Twitter. He said, and I quote, Today, the U.S. designates Burma, China, Eritrea, Iran, Nigeria, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and the list goes on and on as countries of concern under the International Ooh. Religious Freedom Act of 1998, the U.S. is unwavering in its commitment to religious freedom. No country or entity should be allowed to prosecute people with impunity because of their beliefs. These annual designations show that when religious freedom is attacked, we will act. So what are your thoughts about the U.S. now, finally, because they had um, hinted on this earlier this year, and now finally they have put Nigeria for the first time on their... Uh, Nigerian blackness. Christians and Muslims. Huddle up, huddle up, huddle up, huddle up. <laughs> huddle up, huddle up. Get in here, get in here, get in here. For what, group a group, talk. a group what? A group, group talk, group <laughs> talk, come. This be Nigeria Christians, get in, get in here, get in here. Let's talk. I know you know you you know I don't go to church and I don't go to mosque. I, don't, I know, but oh, you don't go. I, I'm see your brother. The way you were dancing this morning, I would have thought you went to church. No, I go to where there's free food. <laughs> Can don't you Don't get me wrong. There's, there's salvation in free food. <laughs> I can't. You people need to, you know, first of all, you've given us Nigerian politicians. All Nigerian politicians are either Christian or Muslim, and that means you people see them once a week. You gather with them in church, you don't complain. All of you Christian together. You gather with them in mosque, mm, you don't complain. All of you Muslim together. But now you've all gone together now to go and put us on blacklist. Eh? I feel like this mainly is because of what's going on with the Shiite Muslims. I don't care what's going on with anybody. So this clearly if, was... If I follow what Khan is saying, Khan too says that there's Islamization agenda. Mm. So it's not only the Shia. The head. Well, anyway, Muslims guys, too are complaining. 
so now that the u.s has finally put nigeria and i say finally because they did hint about this earlier this year they put nigeria on this uh uh the religious blacklist Shane, what do you think this means for the relationship between nigeria and the u.s and moving forward what do you think that this means no I, I don't know. fundamentally the relationship is this you know um nigerian social relationship with america has always been one-sided and i do expect that to change economic economically as well Politically, these days, there's beginning to be some kind of turmoil, but this is Trump, I guess. It's not America. This is Trump's America, mm -hmm. you know, which is, for me, is the real America. Trump is removing the veil, you know, that all of you have been looking yeah, at America. Mm. Trump is showing you the real face of America, you know. So, um, I feel, you know, like, as I said, just our religious people in Nigeria, you all need to do better. You all need to, if you need us to do some sacrifices for you at the shrine, towards your behavior you know you know let um, me know so should we just speak thank you for suggesting that so for, maybe for, you guys need some for something to, to, for something some, of this nature can you describe the type of sacrifice that we would need for this ah it's very simple very simple nothing too ethic <laughs> just uh, like we need four virgins for the priests <laughs> I will, I will conduct the what? I will conduct the ceremony okay it takes two weeks to uh, hold the whole of you <laughs> ah, uh, to, you know this uh, this uh, to, to, I want to say is a uh, to to a uh, uh, very uh, we need the potemos, uh, potemos, uh, uh, scrotum, scrotum, scrotum of the potemos. Uh, 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 one lion ear. Uh -huh. And you must not kill the lion. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So one lion. The lion is alive. Okay. Uh -huh. One lion's ear. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Lizard teeth. Normally we need lizard teeth, like four. Lizard, lizard teeth. Okay. Four lizard teeth. Four. Yes, four lizard teeth. That's the main hard thing mm. that we need to get. The other one, you can just give me money. I'll go and buy that one in the market. No man, no man. How can we trust you with some money? A ocean kuti. Ah Come, you probably the one that put us on religious <laughs> blacklist. I'm trying to remove us. You know, it is not. It is not the actions <laughs> of we ancestor ancestor worshippers <laughs> that has put us on this blacklist. This is it is the out. actions of you Christian and Muslims. And let me, she mm -hmm. kuti at the African shrine, mm -hmm. help you and you are complaining. You are Listen, if you don't want me to help, don't by force. <laughs> it's not by force. Let's read this show. Um, this is coming from Samson saying, Nigeria is a studio with different actors and actresses and they come to play their role and leave. When we, the Nigerian youth, are tired of all these funny people, we will all push them out of the studio and then send them to the uh, Hey, One center. person in my page has asked the most important question here that you didn't ask. Uh, Mwa mama, you are very intelligent. See, how much do you need to buy the rest? Can you imagine? Good girl. <laughs> hey, hey. Good, good person. Yeah. Thank you, Jari Mwa mama. So hey. how much? Hey, hey. For a country as big as no, Nigeria, exactly. 260. We are now 206 million. We so are no longer 198 yeah. or 200. Not everybody needs one, one chicken first. <laughs> That one normal. That's why I said go market. Go this one. I'm going to need jam. One more chicken. One more chicken. One more chicken. For like 205 million people. Okay. Have you seen the? Yes, yes. So I mean, it, what I want us to do is there's, a, there's no need to uh, take Mena's money okay. back. Okay. Let us just give it to you. Just transfer it to, uh, to you. <laughs> Since we've already lost it, let me now just use it. That Mena money, not be 25 billion. Uh -huh. that money, see? Oh my gosh, that is hilarious. Shay, well, let's go. It's one minute past 12. We are, are we going? Yeah, we are going. Please, Nigerians, I will open GoFundMe for us. <laughs> we need this people to be important. To wash, Anyways, guys, to cleanse. Thank you for today's show. By the time I finish the tutorial, our mm. name will disappear from the blacklist. Eh. They will just open the book tomorrow. They won't know. The ancestors. They will not, and they will not know what happened. I call them the ASS. <laughs> I don't want to say the name because it will sound like a curse word, but the Ancestor <laughs> Secret <laughs> Service. <laughs> The ancestor secret service will go into America and clear. Listen, so it's time to go. A trial will convince you. Thank you so much for today's episode of the People's <laughs> Perspective. Thank you for tuning in, for sending your messages, for calling us, for sending your tweets. Shane, as always, it's a pleasure having you here, and I'm glad to be back. Yeah, and I apologize for missing last week. Back. I wasn't feeling too well, Belen. but it's good to be back. You know, and all of you, Lagos drivers. Give on a safe road. <laughs> and this is what you say every time. I'm telling you because I'm going to jam <laughs> oh them now. Gosh. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. This show comes up on Fridays uh, from 11 a.m. So make it a date with us. Coming up next is the World News coming to you live from our media studios. Stick around. We are Lagos Talks 91.3. Let's talk.